Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Bboss1997 and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a bit uh, out of the ordinary from what I normally do, but I've had this uh, interest for a long time and I haven't really posted any videos about it, which is surprising to me, but you know what? That's alright. So today I'm just going to be giving you an overview of uh, fountain pens. Uh, if you've sort of you know, read or watched any movies, read any books, literature, watched any movies about old times or um, things that, that, that occurred a long time ago, you'd probably have heard of fountain pens or heard of them mentioned at least once. And uh, today I'll be giving you an introduction to them. Now, I'm going to take the caps off of both of these pens and uh, we'll get started. Now here we have the typical point to a ballpoint pen. And here we have points to fountain pens. Uh, very different, as you can see. Um, and that's because they work in very different ways. A ballpoint pen literally has a ball in the point. Um, what you have is, is this sort of very viscous, I think it might be oil-based ink in a cartridge, and that goes down to the tip. Let me move these. goes down to the tip and is literally deposited on the page by a ball that rolls. So you get a line that looks like that, if my camera will focus, yes. A uh, fountain pen has a completely different system and principle of operation. The ink is instead water-based, it is a dye-based ink, pigments are not used because, uh, well, I'll discuss that later. Um, it's a water-based ink, um, and fountain pens work off of the principle of capillary action. Probably not going to be able to show you because this camera doesn't like focusing at all, but if you can see, eh, maybe not, you can see that there's a bit of a slit going down the middle from that hole all the way to the tip. At the tip there's a little ball of solder. Typically it's, well it's not always solder, sometimes it's uh, other materials, but it is tipped. And um, the ink comes down a little channel called the feed, that is that black area there. Those are veins, those hold extra ink and is deposited on the page by capillary action. So it's a, uh, it all depends on the pen, but it's a very much thicker line. Um, it is wet, and you also need to be careful when uh, you, you need to make sure that your ink has enough time to dry before you turn your page or wipe your hand over it, because this can happen. So if I'm writing, you will smear your ink, and you will get ink on your thumb. But, um, that's that. That's how a fountain pen works. Um, now these two different fountain pens are two very different models. The one on the left is an Estabrook pen, and Estabrooks were typically, I think they were the, the working man's pen, or working person's pen. Um, they were not too expensive, but they were of good quality. On the right here is a Mont Blanc fountain pen. These were the these were the status fountain pens. These were these were quite expensive and still are. Uh, this one I got it um, I got it and it wasn't that expensive because it was at an estate sale. But um, I, I did some research and I found out that this pen is actually quite valuable. So um, that nib that's the tip of the pen. That nib is made of gold. Um, so we have two contrasts, and they're both great pens, and I'll give you an example of both. Now, um, I want to talk about this one. This one is what I call my Estabrook Hybrid, because this is made from parts from three different pens. I had three different Estabrook pens. I had used, uh, two of them were out of commission, one of them was working. I didn't like the way the working one looked. I liked the way the red one looked. The red one is the one with this body. Um, but it didn't work. And I didn't like its cap. I liked the cap of the green one, but I didn't like the but the body had a crack in it. So I took the body of the red one, the ink sack of the working one, and the cap of the green one, put it all together, and screwed a nib into it. And I have this very, very, very nice pen that writes in a very fine line. I use this one every day.
Fountain pens are interesting because uh, typically when you have a ballpoint pen, the tip comes straight out of the front like this. But when you have this, the point, the writing surface, is off to the side. So it is a bit of a different feeling. And you also need to make sure that you don't press down hard. If you're a, if you're a, a writer that presses down quite hard when you're writing with things, I don't know if, uh, unless you change the way you write, fountain pens are not necessarily going to be the best for you. They're not for everyone. There are some, some uh, not, not for me, but there are some grievances for some people, like what I mentioned before, pressing down too hard. Um, if they're not put together properly, they do, they will leak. But if you have a pen and you, and you treat it right, it shouldn't, because uh, if you store it down like this, obviously gravity is going to pull that water-based ink down into the tip, and if you jostle it, ink will, will come out. But if, typically you want to store your pen upward so that the ink all falls down back into the, into the chamber. Um, there are two different, or there are several different ways to fill them, but uh, two very popular ways are the lever fill and the piston fill. Let's start with piston fill. This section on the end here turns, and there's a screw that's connected to a piston inside here, and it literally sucks ink up like a syringe into the into the chamber. Uh, you stick it in ink. This is this is my favorite ink in the whole world. This is called it's in a Mont Blanc container, but it's not Mont Blanc. This is called Noodler's ink. Um, check them out. Great site. They have really vibrant, uh, very potent inks for fountain pens. They have all different colors. I have whole bunch of colors back here, but, um, great ink. So, anyway, so it sucks the ink up, and then you have your ink coming out of the tip. Lever fill is very different. Instead of having a solid, uh, container for the ink, they have a sack, a very flexible sack. Uh, the old ones are made of rubber, the new ones are made of latex, but they expand and contract, and this lever on the side pulls out like this, and compresses a plate that's right next to the sack and pushes the air out. And with the lever still pulled down, you put it in the ink, and then you snap the lever back into position, and the sack will expand and suck the ink up. Now, uh, this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to stop it here and continue with another video.